Morning class. Today our assignment is going to be to look up five culinary definitions of knife cuts. So to start off, we're going to do a PowerPoint which shows the cuts. Now I want each student to, on a piece of paper, write down the cut, write down the size of the cut, and make sure you write down the name of the cut so you know what it is and you can sketch a little picture of the approximate size of this, okay? So the main objective is to learn these five knife cuts. On our PowerPoint, first we have Julianne. Julianne is about a two to three inch long stick, which is about one sixteenth to one eighth inch long. That is our Julianne cut. The next one we have is our Batonne cut which is about one fourth by one fourth to two inches long. Our next one is our Payson cut. It's a one half by one half, and it's approximately one eighth inch thick. Our next one is our Rondell cut. It's about one eighth to one half inch cut, which rondel simply means it's our round cut. Then our last one we have is our chiffonade. Our chiffonade is about one millimeter thick, so it's very small. They're small, thin strands, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is a read, pair, share. So I want each student to look up information about the five cuts and write it on your piece of paper that you just jotted everything down. So you're gonna start with Julianne. So look up what Julianne is. Now, some of the things I want you to find about Julianne is why we use Julianne. Um, what, can, what can you do with the Julianne cut? And if you find any recipes that call for the Julianne cut, you can write that down on your piece of paper but go down through all five words. I'll give each each student about five to 10 minutes, depending on how everybody's working, to find their information and jot it down. Now, after that five, 10 minutes time goes by, we are going to get into groups. After everybody gets into groups of three, each group of three will share their information and their findings that they found out about their cuts. Um, some of the things that they will find out about their cuts. So if they started with Julianne, Julianne was used for a lot of pasta dishes, like a lo mein, chicken lo mein, beef lo mein. There'd be a lot of Julianne cuts in there because they cook up nice and quick. Now, these are some of the things the students will be sharing with each other, then share with the rest of the class. Then we go to the batonet cut. One of the groups might say the batonet cut they found is simply cut about the size of French fries. So a French fry could be a batonet cut. Or carrots and peppers on a vegetable tray would be another good example of the batonet cut. Another group might find that Paysan is used to cut kind of like cheese for a like cheese and cracker tray. So it's a small, thin square that they find and they cut that that size. Another group might find for Rondell that say cucumbers for a salad are cut in that round dimension and that thickness or carrots possibly for a Chicken soup or a beef stew can be cut that way too. Um, one of the other groups for chiffonade could find out that usually chiffonade is used for herbs. So it's usually like basil, things you can roll up and slice very thin in dishes. So that was kind of their explanation of all of them that they would be sharing in their groups with each other, then they would get in to their groups. I'd have one person from each group share that information with the rest of the class. So the 
think pair share is pretty good for the English learning students because it's not putting that student on the spot. The student has a little time to do their own research. Then while they're doing their research, I always like to go over and kind of steer that student in the right direction. If you have an English learning student or a student with an IEP, they might need a little assistance, but this gives you time to kind of go around and double check and make sure they're all on the same page when they're by themselves. Then when they get into the group of three, they can kind of share their information. So if they're not quite sure of what they found, this is a good time for the other students to kind of help them so they feel more secure with their findings and make sure they're correct. Then after they share all that information with each other, then it's usually presented to the class so everybody can kind of talk about their findings that they found everything. So say the one group has, you know, found the shift nod cut was for basil. Somebody else may say, well, hey, the shift nod can be used for cutting potatoes very, very thin and frying them to make like little potato straws. So there are several different things that the groups can share, which one group might have found and another group didn't. So we're all on the same page and we're all getting a lot of information and everybody's doing their own little research. So it's read, pair, share. I think I always call it think, pair, share, but I think they're both pretty much the same thing. I think I say think, pair, share all the time because that's why I learned it a couple years ago. But think, pair, share, read, pair, share, same thing. All right. Thank you.